Good evening. Welcome to our Bible study. If you haven't joined us before, I'm usually waiting for some people to come on because it's a live Bible study. Uh, so people join in, and while I wait, I read some jokes. They're usually really bad. I tried to catch some fog. I missed. I don't like that one. <clears throat> What's the difference between an African elephant and an Indian elephant? About 3,500 kilometers. An invisible man married an invisible woman. Their kids were nothing to look at either. <laughs> Some laugh. No, one person in. I like to practice my knock-knock jokes. I just adore them. What is smarter than a talking cat? A spelling bee. Still just one. Oh, there's two. I see Tina. You missed some good ones already, Tina. You have to go back and watch, and watch them again. Um, so many people are getting emails from the Prince of Nigeria. I got one from an Egyptian pharaoh, but it turned out to be a pyramid scheme. Oh, there's a bunch of people. So it looks like we got Rick. If you're, if you're here, say hello. Uh, we got Joyce. Why does a moon rock taste better than an earth rock? Because it's a little meteor. How many more I should do? Yeah, if you show up, say hello to everybody else so they know you're here. Oh, there's Gail. Hi, Gail. Uh -huh. I'm not going to do that one. How do you catch a squirrel? Climb up a tree and act like a nut. Oh, there's Nate. Hi, Nate. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to do one more. We have enough. I can start after this one. Okay, what happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed away. All right, there's that one. I'm going to do a little, uh, a little thing here that might seem a little familiar. But I just got something the other day. Well, today actually. It just came in the mail. Uh, I know it's mirrored because uh, we got um, on selfie mode on my phone. But this is a tablet. It's a Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. And it comes with a little pencil. You can all see the picture here. So I got this for work so I can draw and do hand calculations at the office. So I'm going to open it up, do the big reveal. It's one of those unboxing things. And we'll see what's inside. Sliding. It's opening. Okay. Let's see what this thing looks like. We have bread again. It's not a tablet again. So I should be very disappointed, right? How can I how can I turn this around? It's terrible. You know, you spend hundreds of dollars on a tablet and you get a piece of bread. So how should I react to this? I could react to this with anger, disappointment. But I could look at it a different way. I can say, hey, over here I've got a plate and I've got a piece of luncheon meat. It's not bologna, which seems to be everybody's favorite uh, after talking to people. So I can cut this in half. <clears throat> I can put my Montreal smoked ham. Oh, wait, wait a second. I can't do that yet. I'm going to put mayonnaise, Hellman's mayonnaise, on there because that's delicious. If you don't like mayonnaise, you're crazy. I think Carl's watching from the States, and I'm not sure if they like mayonnaise as much in the States as the Canadians do. Okay, put the mayonnaise on there. Put my uh, Montreal smoked meat on there. Make myself a nice little sandwich. So my utter disappointment of getting bread as a tablet has now turned into a blessing. I've got a sandwich. It's nourishment. It might not be the best sandwich in the world or the greatest sandwich. You might not like mayonnaise or Montreal smoked meat. But regardless, it's still nourishment. It's a blessing. It's something I can eat and get energy from. And it's good. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about blessings. Uh, again, this is a discussion. I'm watching the comments come up on my phone as they come up. So if you have any comments, please mention that and I'll uh, read them and we can discuss that a little bit. I'm going to ask a couple of questions as we go along too. And again, write your answers in the comments and I'll, I'll repeat those for everybody else. Oh, Gail says no cheese and lettuce. That's very true. Uh, I don't know. It's simple. Simple meat sandwich. That's what I like. Lots of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is the best. So my first question I'm going to ask, since we're talking about blessings, 
And this is something that everybody should answer. Uh, at this point, at this time, we have seven people watching. It's a massive group. So I should get 14 things. Because what are two things that you are thankful for? Two things. So what are two things that you're thankful for? I'm going to kind of force you to count your blessings. I'm not sure if Gail is thankful for cheese and lettuce, because she might have those at her house and I don't. So maybe those things are really she's thankful for. But what are two things that you're thankful for? I'm going to try to make you count your blessings, make you look to find in your life what is something that's good. Uh, for me, I was thinking about this, and I don't know, there's a lot of things I can be thankful for. Uh, the thing that came to, to mind, I guess, initially uh, was, it, Nate just said it, uh, health. Health is the one thing that came to my mind, and it actually leads out into so many other things that I'm also thankful for. Uh, Nate also mentions food. Uh, I happen to have food right here, very delicious sandwich, but it's all mine. Later on, I offered it to Evan, but he didn't want it. Oh, Nate's thankful. He's got three. He's ahead of everybody else. Cell phone. Tina says coffee and chocolate. Very good. Uh, Rick says that's an expensive sandwich. Very, very true indeed. Uh, Joyce says convenience and the ability to buy food and the printed word of God. That's a very good answer where we have that message right there and we have it all compiled. Uh, when we read the New Testament and we read about the times that they were there, they didn't have that. They had people teaching them and they didn't have that nice, nice little package that we have or a nice little website in many cases to look at. Uh, Brenda says my health and my family. Health is the one thing that I thought of because so many things spread out from that. Um, because I have my health and I have um, the ability to do things, I can do so many things. I can work. I'm blessed with the ability to be able to work and I have work to do. Uh, there's a lot of people in the world now that have trouble with that at this time. Um, I'm able to do hobbies. I like cycling and I have the health so I can, and I can uh, do that as well and I enjoy that. Uh, volunteering. I like doing things to help other people out. Uh, Randy says spiritual and physical families. Uh, Nate says humble leaders in the church. That's a very good blessing that we have. Uh, Marty says family and good health. Uh, Rick says spouse and patience. I wonder if those two things go together, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but there's so many things that we can be thankful for. Um, you've probably heard that phrase, count your blessings. Uh, if you are worshiping with a group, you may have sung the song, count your blessings. Um, that's one of those things that we do at times. And I was wondering when I count my blessings. When am I most likely to count my blessings? Uh, everybody's doing it now because I asked them to, so they're gracious enough to do that for me and participate. But it's one of those things that if somebody tells you to count your blessings, I wonder if that's almost a cue to show that your things maybe aren't going so well. And they're saying, hey, buddy, count your blessings. You know, I can see you're really struggling. Uh, it's kind of like if you're told to calm down, you're only ever told to calm down when you're freaking out. So maybe when things aren't going so well, your, your friends, people that are close to you, say, hey, count your blessings. Now, my mom handed me one here on the side. Uh, it says, physical ailments. ailments can meet new people. So because you have a physical ailment, you can meet new people. Okay, so that's where my mom's turning it around. She's turning a, a physical ailment, which a lot of people would see as a bad thing, and it is a negative thing. But that can be turned around into an opportunity to meet new people, uh, you know, wherever you get your treatment or the other people that are in similar situations. Uh, Melinda says, my little red car and church family. That's what she's uh, thankful for. So there's lots of things that we can look for and be thankful for. And sometimes we get into that trap where we focus a lot on what we don't have rather than what we do have. We might start thinking about, well, I don't have this. If only I had this. If only I had that. You start looking at these things that you wish you had. And you put your mind and your focus on that rather than what you actually do have. Uh, and that can lead down kind of into a bad place. You can start thinking too much about that sort of stuff. And then you start getting negative. You start just naturally having those negative thoughts, those negative feelings about all these things that you don't have and how you wish your life was not the way it is and you wish it was a different way. When there is actually a lot of things that you should be thankful for. Um, Tina, Tina, I agree with Tina very much. She says we almost have too many blessings to count. I know especially in our society, uh, you know, I'm located in Canada. Uh, you might be watching from other places in the world. But in our, in our society, we have so many things to be thankful for and so many blessings. You know, I, I, one of the other people earlier mentioned the ability and the, the convenience to go get food. Uh, there's so many people in the world that don't have that. 
you know, we can just walk over to the tap and turn on nice cold water that's clean and drink it. And a lot of people don't have that. These are things that we can be very thankful for. They're blessings. And that's something that we need to do. We have to focus on these things that we do have. You know, maybe we don't have things that we might want. And maybe we don't have things that we think we need. But we still have so many things that we do have that we have to try to put our focus on that. You go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 18. Now, this is a passage that I think is very important to look at. And again, there's many in the scriptures that relate to this. Um, and it deals with the idea of being a Christian. And oftentimes when you're told to count your blessings, you might view it as, as somewhat of an optional thing. Well, yeah, that's a really good idea. I think everybody should probably do that. You know, you just kind of think that that's probably a, a you know, good habit to get into. But if you look at 1 Thessalonians, we'll look at chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He's telling us to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, this is not an optional thing. It's not something that is, you know, something that we can opt out of, you know, that, you know, well, I'm just not going to count my blessings. I don't really want to do that. Um, it's one of those things that we are told to do as Christians. Uh, there are going to be things that happen in our life that are negative. Uh, there's other, another passage that says, Mourn with those who mourn and rejoice with those who people who rejoice. You might get the, that's, a, that's a bit of a paraphrase. I might get the wording a little bit wrong. But the idea is there that there are times that we are going to be down and we're going to be low, but we still are told to give thanks in all circumstances. Even if we are going through a difficult time and we're going through trouble, we still must look for those things that we're thankful for. There's always something that you can be thankful for, and we have to search those things out. So that leads to my second question. So again, if, if you have a response, please respond in the comments. My second question is kind of a two-parter. Uh, I sent these questions out in an email earlier to the members of the church that should be joining us, and I kind of added on to it a little bit just right now. But I said, what gets in the way of us counting our blessings? And that's where I ended it in the email, but I'm going to add kind of a second part on that because I, I don't want to leave it on kind of a downer on my second question says, what gets in the way of us counting our blessings, and how can we overcome them? So how can we ever overcome those things that get in the way of us counting our blessings? So again, please respond in the comments. Uh, what are some things that get in our way? What are some of the things that, that may prevent us or be a barrier to us looking for those positive things in our life, looking for those things that we're thankful for in our lives? And then when we know what those barriers are, how can we overcome those barriers? Hopefully people have some tricks in... You know, when you're down, when you're low, uh, I've often learned that if you're on the outside and somebody's feeling low, uh, it's, sometimes it's not the best to say, hey, stop looking at all that negative, focus on the positive. You know, that may be not what they hear right now. Again, mourn with those who mourn. But there are things that we can do within ourselves to try to get ourselves out of that kind of uh, that bad place and try to count our blessings, kind of look, at, look for what we're thankful for. Uh, some of the things I thought of, of, of things that get in the way of us counting our blessings um, probably the most obvious, I guess, uh, would be our circumstances. Uh, if you're going through something very difficult, say you just got laid off. Again, many people in the world recently have had that happen to them because the economy is dropping. Um, if you get laid off, something bad happens. You might have a hard time looking at the blessings in your situation. You know, you're, you're out of a job, you're having a hard time making ends meet, and you're not feeling super good about it. So you might have a hard time looking for those things that you're thankful for. Uh, Gail says sins and insecurity. Uh, that can get in the way of us counting our blessings. Uh, again, if you're doing something, especially if you know it's wrong, if you're, if you're missing the mark and you know you're missing the mark, you're stumbling, you're having trouble, you might start getting down on yourself. You start feeling bad. Um, insecurity is, a, is another one that's, that's interesting where if you just have that natural feeling of, of maybe not having enough confidence, to deal with things again you start thinking down on yourself you think start thinking like yeah i'm not so good you know and you start feeling bad about yourself and talking yourself down and that can be that downward spiral of just thinking negative all the time and not looking for those things that you're thankful for uh another one that i thought of was our mood uh kind of our internal uh our internal conversation uh self-talk is one word that i've heard about that uh the things that you tell yourself when you're going through a certain situation uh, last weekend, I was riding with a friend in the River Valley, and we were having this conversation. Um, again, this might be a bit of a uh, getting into the mountain biking world a little bit that you guys might not relate to. 
Uh, Tina has a comment though. She says, at first, at first thought, I came up with a lot of things, but they all boil down to me. So my bad attitude, pain, time. Let me try to expand this comment a little bit here. I don't know if I can. Yeah. Bad attitude, pain, time. Uh, putting God and his precepts will put us right. So uh, I, I think maybe what Tina's saying, hopefully she can confirm this, but uh, it comes down to yourself, uh, looking more into yourself. Uh, your bad attitude, the things that you're going through, your pain that you're feeling, uh, you know, the things that you're going through at the time um, is all focused internally on you. And that might put you in that place where you don't want to be thankful for the things that you're blessed with. But again, putting God in his precepts will put us right. Uh, putting him first, looking for, looking outward, I guess. So again, not uh, internally based, but outwardly based. And then you can start recognizing the things that you're thankful for. Uh, Melinda says, not recognizing that they are blessings. So you might not see something as a blessing at first. I think my mom's example dealt with that, where if you have that illness and or something that happened to you physically, um, you might think, okay, that's something that's really bad. You don't think it's a blessing, but then it can turn into a blessing by the people that you meet. You might make a wonderful friendship. You know, you have those relationships built out of that negative thing that happened to you. So you don't recognize it as a blessing at the time, but you see it as a blessing later, you know, as you, as you move down in your life. Uh, Brenda Ball says, sometimes it's just life that gets, gets you kind of messed up. Uh, and you forget that you have so many blessings. Uh, again, if you have those ailments, those things that, that focus, you start focusing on the wrong thing. And you start getting uh, caught up in the whirlwind is one term that I learned in, in business and in, in coaching is that you get caught up in just being so busy all the time. Busy, 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 busy. And if you're busy with things that bring you down, you again will start to forget about looking for those things that you're thankful for. So again, mood. Uh, back to riding in the river valley. Uh, again, in the, the etiquette on the trails, uh, as far as I understand, hopefully I'm not wrong in this, uh, if I'm on a mountain bike and I'm riding along, oh, Rick's got the picture of the bike, so that's me with the little red hat. So I'm riding along on my bike. I've got a bell, so I can ring my bell, and then people, they kind of move out of the way. Uh, or you, you say, like, on your left, you kind of yell behind people just to make them know that you're, make them uh, hear you so they know that you're coming. And I like doing that so I don't surprise people. You know, if I come riding up beside somebody, kind of out of the corner of their eye, they get kind of startled. And so I like to ring the bell, like to do that sort of stuff. But sometimes when you're riding, you're riding on these narrow trails. Uh, mountain biking world is called single track. So single track because only one person can walk on it at a time. And on these trails, there's not a lot of people because they're generally a little bit more difficult to walk and ride on. But they're really tight and turny. You're riding around through all these trees. And sometimes you get going a little bit fast. And sometimes there's other people on these trails. Uh, a lot of the time, it's either another bike or it's a trail runner. Trail runners like doing these kind of trails too. And when you come around the corner head on with somebody else and you almost crash, you get startled, surprised, right? So what, I was talking about this with my friend, what is your natural reaction? What is your natural reaction when you get in that state? And him and me both have seen two different types of reactions. Uh, we've seen the person who laughs. They're like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, and you just keep riding along. And you've had the people that just freak on you. They just get so mad. They yell and they scream. Why are you coming so fast around the trails? Why didn't you ring your bell? You know, they start yelling at you at these things. And I kind of thought about that. And, and I, I started thinking, I wonder why that can be some of those natural reaction. It almost goes back to if you drop something or you break something or you trip on something. What is your natural reaction? Is it to like laugh or, you know, kind of smile that you made a mistake? Or is it to get down on yourself and, and get super angry about why that happened? And we talked about it a little bit, and almost my first thought was uh, the reason people sometimes automatically revert to anger and yelling is maybe because you're focusing so much on the wrong thing. You're thinking about all these negative things in your life. I had a bad day at work. I had a terrible experience when I tried to buy this thing. You know, when somebody tried to ship me a, a tablet, they sent me a piece of bread. You know, you start thinking about all these angry things, and they keep getting you mad all the time. So your natural response when something comes up out of the blue is anger and rage. And I thought about that. And I think maybe that's why sometimes how people have a hard time counting their blessings. So they're just thinking all the time about all these negative things that are happening in their life. It's something that, that we can get so focused on. And I'm not saying that we should ignore all the negative things in our life. We have to deal with them. We have to think about them and, and kind of react to them. 
it can't be though where we are focusing on those things all the time. We have to count our blessings. We have to make sure that we look at the things that are positive in our lives. Um, this is touched on by Melinda, where sometimes we don't recognize the blessing until later. And again, that hindsight is twenty twenty. You look back and you say, I, I, "This thing that happened to me was really bad." My mom's example again. You know, where where um, we get an illness, we get an injury, we get something like that happen to us. And we see it as a bad thing, but it turns into something good. You make that relationship with somebody else. Uh, uh, Brenda has another comment where she says, Sunripes are great apples, kind of like Max. Oh, they like apples, I guess. Apples we can be very thankful for. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're getting at there, but apples are still very good to have. So some of the things I thought of about maybe overcoming that is try to make it a habit in your life of looking at the good in every situation. Um, again, when, when things are down, things are going really bad, it can be really hard to look and count your blessings. But when things are actually good, try to continue to do that. Try to look for those things that you're thankful for. Try to make it a habit. Uh, you could even make it um, kind of an exercise for yourself. Uh, you know, maybe three times a day. You know, maybe after you have breakfast, after you have lunch, after you have supper, look and say, okay, what am I thankful for? And if you happen to pray before those meals, Pray to God and thank God for something in your life, something different, breakfast, morning, or breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So then you're looking at three things to be thankful for. After you start doing that more and more, uh, looking positively at your life and the things that you're blessed with can become second nature. So then maybe when you're surprised and you're shocked and those times are down for you, you can still look for those positive things in your life. Uh, you have to make an effort to look for the positive. Uh, Again, if things are going really well in your life, you can think, hey, it's a really nice day, things are great, and that is good. We count our blessings. Make an effort when maybe you're not feeling so good, or make an effort when you're not really thinking about it at all, and then it'll start to become second nature, and you can train yourself to look for the positive, look for the things that you're thankful for. If you go to Philippians 4, uh, I've used this passage, if you've listened to lessons and sermons that I've done, I use this passage a lot because I think it relates to so many situations in so much of our life. Um, and there's so much in this passage that I think is so good. And the thing that I'm going to look at today or try to point out is what God's telling us in this passage is that our focus should be on the positive. Uh, we shouldn't be focusing on those negative things, all those bad things that are happening to us. Again, we shouldn't be ignoring them because we have to learn from them. We have to deal with them. But our focus should be on those positive things. So Philippians 4, I'm going to read verses 4 to 8. Again, this whole chapter, if you have time, read the whole chapter because everything deals with this and it's so good. But we're just going to look at verses 4 to 8. So it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. God is telling us, he's training us how to think, uh, what we should be focused on. Uh, Tina's comment, she says, it's never too late to thank God. Um, again, don't give up on yourself. That's very wise words by Tina, is to never give up on yourself and don't think it's too late. You can always turn, turn it around, turn that ship around and and thank God for the things that you're blessed with. And we are certainly blessed in our lives. Um, again, in our society, we have so many physical things around us, so many conveniences, uh, so many things available to us that we are so blessed. Um, other parts of the world, not so much. Everybody, though, can look for things that they're thankful for. Uh, it's up to us to choose to look at what God wants us to be thankful for. Uh, we have to look for what God has blessed us with. Uh, that's what our job is. Again, don't focus on all your don'ts. Think about all the things that you have. All the things that you don't have, think about the things that you have. Uh, one example that stuck with me, again, during the pandemic, um, I, I think it's probably settled down a little bit now. I'm not totally sure because uh, when I go grocery shopping, I kind of go late at night, so the crowds are really low. But I know when I was going kind of right around, you know, April, May, during that time when everybody was a little bit nervous about things, and it was all sort of... Um, you know, getting into uh, this pandemic thing, there was a long, there was tended to be long lineups at the grocery store. Everybody had that, that physical distancing. 
Um, the the at the grocery store I was at, they uh, they sprayed down the little conveyor that the food goes down. They spray it down and wipe it down between every customer, so you can't load your groceries up before the next person. Uh, you have to wait for theirs to go through. They spray it down, clean it off. You put yours on. You put yours through. So it slows down the whole process. So there's a lot of waiting. You're sitting there waiting. And I heard stories. I didn't actually see this myself because uh, I, I guess I was blessed that way. Uh, but I heard stories from other people and from other people that I know that work in retails. This was really frustrating a lot of people. Uh, they had to wait. They are getting frustrated. I think those other stresses in their life were starting to feed in there too. So they're starting to get super angry because they had to wait in line. Like, why is this taking so long? And they start getting mad and clenched fists and anger. You could either choose to look at that choose to look at how inconveniencing that is to you, or you can choose to look at how blessed you are because you have money to buy groceries. If you get a cart full of food that you have money in your pocket, or I guess on your, your either Visa or debit card or whatever, you can buy it, that's a blessing. Um, it was mentioned earlier in the comments, we are blessed to actually have groceries to pick off the shelf. Again, many parts of the world, they don't have that. If you want food, you gotta go I don't know, either get it out of the field or get it from somewhere else. It's not just like going down to, for me, I go down to Sobeys or Safeway or Superstore or any of those grocery stores to just go get the food. Um, many people don't have that in the world. That's something to be thankful for. Again, you're inconvenienced being at the grocery store for a long time. Uh, now that masks are, are mandated, at least in our community, our municipality, you know, it might be a little bit hard to breathe, kind of hot. You know, you're standing in line. Uh, I know for me, I don't like taking my phone out of my pocket because I consider my hands kind of dirty from touching all the food in there. So I don't want to get my phone dirty uh, just because I don't like cleaning it all the time. So I don't look at my phone. So you're just standing there. You're just waiting. So people can get very frustrated. You can think about, I wish I didn't have to wait so long. You could think about that or you could think about how blessed you are that you have the ability to go shopping, the ability to get food, the ability to have selection. So that it's, it's something to switch, something to switch in your mind. Think about those things that he's telling us to think about in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Think about those things. And you have to make an effort. You have to think about it. You have to focus on looking for those things to be thankful for. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you're going to look at one more passage. And I like this one because it, it really shows that God has blessed us with so much. He has given us so much in this world. Again, it might not be physical where you are. You can always, though, look at the spiritual blessings that we have in the scriptures. Uh, some of the sermons that we've done and looked at recently in, on Sundays deal with some of those blessings that we do have. If we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we can look at verse 8. So 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. It says, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This passage uh, shows that God has that ability to bless us. Uh, sometimes we not, may not recognize that blessing. Again, if you get uh, some sort of illness or an injury, you think this isn't a blessing. But God has a way to turn that around much of the time. Again, you have to look for it. You have to think about those praiseworthy things. Uh, you have to look for these things so that you can look for the blessings in every situation. But God, it shows in this passage how God is able to bless you abundantly. Uh, he's blessed us with so much. And most of all, again, we, we, look, we tend to look at physical blessings, but we have these spiritual blessings. And most of all, he's blessed us with that salvation through grace. Uh, this is one thing that I, I really find I'm thankful for personally, myself. Um, if we try to live that perfect legalistic life. Uh, we try to do everything by the numbers. We look at the Bible. We study it. Uh, we try to do everything just perfectly. If we try to try to save ourselves with that, we are going to fail. We're going to make mistakes. Uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody's going to miss the mark to some extent. Uh, and it may not even be um, something that you know or understand or recognize. Again, if you make a mistake, you made the mistake whether you realize it or not. So we are going to fail if we try to live that perfect legalistic life. But we have salvation through grace, and that's a blessing. Uh, since we're saved through grace, we have that leeway to make mistakes, and that's what God's plan is. He understands that, you know, if we make mistakes, if we stumble, we are saved through grace. He understands that that's going to happen. Uh, again, there, there's a verse, uh, I believe in James, where it says, We are not to continue sinning so that grace may increase. 
But we have to strive to live that righteous life. But God understands that we are going to stumble. And grace covers those stumbles. He covers those mistakes that we make. And I see that as an amazing blessing. I see that as something where I can live a life with peace. I can live a life with understanding that if I make those mistakes, I don't have to get so down on myself about it. I can recognize the mistake and I can move on. And I can understand that he is saving me through grace. And that's an amazing blessing that we don't have to live that legalistic life. We can live a life that's, that's free and full. And we know that because of Jesus' sacrifice that we have that grace that's going to cover those things. So let's live our lives focusing on the blessings. Uh, don't get down that kind of nasty rabbit hole of looking at all the negative things, all the things that you don't have, all the bad things that are happening to you. Again, you can't ignore those things. Uh, think about them, but also add to that the things that you're thankful for, the blessings that you have. And you'll turn your way of thinking around eventually. That's what God wants us to do, and that's what God is encouraging us to do out of the scriptures from what we've seen today. Uh, let's close our Bible study in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for blessing us so, so much. Uh, most of all, we thank you for blessing us with your Son who died on the cross for us so that we can have that salvation through grace. Uh, those mistakes that we make in our lives uh, are covered. Uh, as long as we're dedicated to you, we're doing our best. Uh, and we, we, we strive to live that life that is uh, mimicked after Jesus' life and mimic his qualities. Um, we are saved through grace, so we can make those mistakes. We can stumble. And we know that we still have that that gift of salvation through this, this uh, gift of grace that you've given to us. I pray that you can uh, be with us and give us the strength to look for those things that we're thankful for in our lives. I pray that you can be with us as we, if we do start thinking and focusing so much on the negative that we can uh, take advantage of the opportunities we have and the effort that we make to uh, turn ourselves around. And I pray that we can, you can give us the strength to look at the positive and, and always look for those things that we can be thankful for in our lives. Now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. Be safe, be well, and God bless.